Welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today we start another journey, journey through impromptis. The French title, I think it's pronounced impromptis. I hope uh, my French friends will not laugh so much. Uh, I think English speakers pronounce it impromptis, impromptis, something like that, I don't know. Um, but this genre is represented in Chopin's music by three pieces published during Chopin's life and one, the most famous, ironically, Fantasy Impromptu, that was not published during Chopin's life. Um, I have to say it because not everybody knows. Fantasy Impromptu has its opus number, opus uh, 66, but opus 65, the cello sonata, is the last piece that Chopin published uh, before he died. All the other opuses, including some nocturnes, uh, well, actually, I think one nocturne, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the E minor, uh, mazurkas, waltzes, uh, these opus numbers from 66 up are all posthumous uh, pieces. So they were not approved by Chopin. And this project of mine uh, does not include uh, posthumous works. Maybe next year, in 2022, I will make analysis of them just to complete this huge project. Probably yes. Even though I have mixed feelings, I think I, I told you this in some other video. Mixed feelings in presenting pieces of music which were not approved by the composer and what's more, he asked uh, his friends to destroy them after he died. Anyway, this is another problem. Today we have Impromptu in A flat major, opus 29. The genre, the title Impromptu, uh, we have immediately connection with uh, improvisation. And we are correct because the title comes from the word Im to improvise. Um, but what does it really mean to improvise? It means to play whatever we feel, whatever we want. Just start playing whatever I just want in A flat major, let's say. so on. Of course there are many styles of improvisation. We can uh, improvise in a jazz style or classical style or whatever now, but what about a 19th century? Most of, well all of composers were also great in improvising. Chopin was fantastic and we know this from witnesses of his improvisation. Mostly he improvised on themes taken from uh, Polish music, Polish folk music or Polish patriotic music, means the soldiers' songs, or Polish church music, religious music uh, that were sung, was sung in the churches. Uh, this was all um, done usually during meetings with Chopin's, with Polish emigrants and uh, Chopin loved to improvise. We don't exactly know how his improvisations looked, but probably they looked like, not really like impromptis, but more like the prelude in C sharp minor, which I presented to you last week. Um, but we don't know and we will never know. Now, the question is a very important question. Is Empromptu the improvisation written down? No, not at all. And I, if somebody says yes, I'm ready to argue. 
absolutely not. Why? Because you will see that the construction of the piece, the architecture of the, the building, which is the piece, is very carefully thought of, very deeply thought of. This is not improvising, it's just like that. So why impromptis? I learned all of them and my idea is that what is actually improvising and maybe written down improvisation is the material, the melody. Uh, because we, the construction, so this is what I want to tell you in very short, uh, as short as possible. The construction, so the form, the structure of the piece is not taken from improvisation, but what is taken from improvisation is the melodic material. And this we are going to analyze in today and next week and in two weeks with every single impromptu by Chopin. So, if you know this impromptu in A flat major, if you've heard it before, you know that the construction of this piece is extremely simple. A, B, A. So, just like in nocturnes, right? Or scherzos, but scherzos not all, but number one, number two, uh, and number four as well. But um, if we compare uh, impromptis to nocturnes, we have the opposite situation. In nocturnes, we had slow, fast, slow. Uh, not always fast, but usually it was there was a contrast. Here we have the opposite. First is fast, the middle is slow, and then it's fast again. So just like in scherzos, it, but scherzos are bigger. Are uh, they are longer and bigger pieces? Impromptu is. Uh, very little comparing to scherzo. Okay, so let's start the analysis. And what I will do first, I will just play for you the fast part A. And then we will sink into uh, the notes and what's inside. Okay. <laughs> starts part B. Uh, now let's focus on the details. So, um, first of all, if we compare this impromptu to fantasy impromptu, which Chopin wrote a few years before, but he never published it, what is, uh, what are the differences or what is similar? I mean, there are more similarities than differences. And maybe you already know what I want to show you. How phrases are constructed. Fantasy and prompty in C-sharp minor. Short. Short. And this short, it goes up, right? And then long. the same and then we have exactly the same idea here short short and long short short and long so isn't it fantastic I mean it's exactly the same so this was Chopin's idea on impromptis 
Probably. At least this one. And now something very funny. Because as you know me already, if you know me already, you know that my imagination works very much and I like to find some very well, not always funny, because it depends on the music, but I like to find things that inspire me and that make my music mm, more interesting. So here there is a lot of fun in this music and I found an extremely funny description, but without any scenes or any stories, nothing like that. I will just stick with the music and with motifs. but. Just let's imagine that this motif this motif tries to go up, tries to raise or to climb, to go up, and but cannot, right? It tries the first time. Didn't succeed. So tries the second time because you know if I didn't try once, maybe the second time it will go I, it, I mean it will function again not so what to do so the motif is thinking what to do so I the motif is thinking probably I should change the strategy so the motif is thinking maybe I start one octave higher and then it will function and yes indeed it functioned for a little listen uh, first time didn't function so maybe from yes finally the, the motif could say something longer something more and then this is the first phrase uh, the antecedent phrase of the whole musical period and then the consequent phrase is exactly the same but the second part is a little different that's how simple it is. Simple, cute, charming, beautifully written, with a lot of humor. Okay, so this was the first musical period of part A. Now, the second one. And the second one is genius. First of all, it brings us a little uh, lyricism, or I would say more melodic character. <laughs> This is the first part, but what do we hear? How it is constructed? First motif, short. Second, short. Third, long. Short, short, long. But everything is shorter than at the beginning. But can you see that? This is constructed in exactly the same way, but in a miniature. It's smaller. And this is repeated, fantastically written. And then the second part of this is also very funny. Well, I wrote here uh, to myself that this, uh, the right hand, I mean, the melody is talking with itself, like, I mean, like, I don't know if it happens to you, but sometimes it happens to me that I talk to myself. I have a conversation with myself. And I'm normal, I, I hope. But sometimes I ask uh, aloud, I do it aloud. And I ask myself something, then I answer. I talk to myself. And this is exactly like a short conversation, uh, but there are not two, two persons, I think. This is just one melody, one motif that is talking to, uh, to itself. So just listen. Sorry, again. Can you hear that? If not, I will emphasize. Sorry, again. Or the opposite way. If I do it one octave lower, to play like this and then to play it again and we can play 
play uh, with the dynamic. There is so much fun in this moment, but there is just a kind of short conversation. And after this conversation, everything chromatically goes down. Um, and it could go down forever. But it doesn't. Instead, there is a moment when Chopin decides to stop it and just, you know, do like this. Okay. Okay, let's finish this. So that's how it looks. Okay, let's finish this. And we go back to, to the beginning of the piece. So let's listen again from the beginning. Going down and ah, let's finish this. Fantastic! And now uh, we come back to the beginning of the piece. So um, um, this is also, as you can see, um, it's it's constructed with a lot of sense, right? Mm. The proportions are still here. We are back at the beginning and we are going to have part A again. So the first musical period, but it will be different. And this is very funny now. Because this motif, at the first time, was twice the same because couldn't go higher. This time, it will succeed to go higher for the second time. And now listen. Yes, he succeeded. And now I'm thinking, maybe the motif succeeded because before he had the conversation with himself. You know, sometimes it happens when we we'll have to stop, we have to talk with ourselves and we solve the problem. Here, the motif solved the problem and then he will go up and up using the same uh, structure, a melodic structure, until he will reach this part of the keyboard and then we will have the euphoria, we will have a, a happiness that he finally reached the top. And there will be a very beautiful slower melody. I mean, we will still have this triolas, this uh, triplets, uh, I think in English. But this, there will be a melody going down, and then everything will be go going down and falling asleep. And this is almost that's, that's how the part A will end. This is the main idea of this part A prime. So let's listen. <laughs> Yes! Yes! And now, celebration! Okay, so now let's listen to the whole part A. Once again, let's have fun. And now hopefully I play it a little better than before. Okay, lighter. I'll try to play it lighter because I think this piece should be as, as light as possible. I imagine Chopin playing, you know, with his light hand and supple. It must have sounded fantastically. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now let's listen to part B and then let's uh, do the analysis. here of course Chopin at his best beautiful long melody very vocal uh, singing like melody like a song or like an aria um, full of sorrow as well and very touching this is the surface but there is much more behind and I think uh, some of you or most of you will be surprised or even shocked when I show you uh, how fantastically Chopin constructed this middle part. First of all, there is some problem with the bass. Have you heard? Did you notice? You know, the, the, the le left hand in such uh, nocturne-like um, parts always has accompaniment, it's a background. And this accompaniment consists of the bass note and other notes, like we had in nocturnes. And this bass note uh, always corresponds with the melody and they are always together example and it, it's very important this bass note is like a like a basis of everything so it's very important for example as long as we don't have a bass we don't really know what's going on then we know where we are and this bass it's always together with the melody or for example you know, always, or always with the melody. And now listen to this and focus on melody and the bass. so ugly but I want to emphasize the bass. Well, the, what happened to the bass? It's always late. Always late. 
never in time how it should be should be like that. The difference is fundamental. Our feelings, our subconscious, even if you didn't realize it before this video, your subconscious was, without your conscious, was thinking something is not right. Something is wrong. There, there is some misunderstanding. I, this is a good, maybe, word. Between I mean, the right hand and left hand. The right hand doesn't understand why the left hand is always late. Always late. I don't know another piece by Chopin that is exactly written like that. But it has its consequence and it, it has a sense. There is a really deep sense in this. And I'm going to tell you a little later. Uh, so now let's analyze this melody. Uh, so the melody goes up uh, and opens and then there is an answer the first phrase and then the consequent phrase starts the same And this is the end of part A of this middle part, the first part, only one musical period. And now I have a very sad information for you. Uh, no, don't worry, I don't finish the video. <laughs> but I think it's more sad. This will never appear in this piece again. Never appear anymore. So when it appears, you better focus and listen well, because there will be no uh, second chance. And this is strange, because if you know my videos about polonaises, for example, um, or any other or nocturnes, when we had part A, part B, part A, all these parts, they had their own construction. And there was always good proportions. And I mean, when this construction was ABA usually. So we came back to the beginning, especially in polonaises. Here, Chopin doesn't want to. So the proportions in this piece are uh, destroyed in, this, in the middle part. But th there must be a reason. So this, 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 this part A is, is lost. Will we find it? Maybe in the end. Well, who knows? We'll see. But definitely not in part B. Um, maybe it's because of this, uh, the left hand was always late. So Chopin thought, okay, left hand don't know how to play. I will not anymore uh, write this again because it sounds <laughs> Terrible because left hand is never on time. Let's listen again. And one important thing. Chopin wants us to start forte here. Loud. That's why I'm playing so loud. It's very passionate moment. Loud. touching very beautiful but you know what makes it really touching and really special the fact that before the bass was always not on 
never on time was never on time the base was never on time um so we had this feeling of we don't know what's going on now in the heart of the piece um finally the base will be on time and because before it was weren't then that's why we feel this melody even more beautiful than it really is even if it's very beautiful and this is a genius way of writing a, 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 a middle part of the piece of music really um, fantastic so how it is constructed and here also we will have improvisation a lot of improvisation variations on the theme so this is constructed there is a lot of pain and some question listen this first pain second minor second it's always painful and then the question uh, in the air repeated with a little variation and then the answer and this answer is my favorite piece a uh, moment in this piece favorite moment in this piece because it's so warm and so beautiful and you listen you hear the bass the bass is on time Answer, the, uh, sorry, the question. <laughs> Variations of the question. Climax. And this is the first musical period. And then the second one is the same. But we have more variations. We will have more variations in both in the question and also in the answer. Listen. Variation. And now the answer. Do you remember the answer? The answer was like this. Impossible to forget, right? And here it sounds like this. Impromptu. And again the question. Oh, sorry. And now forte. Trills. The trills are important because this is the bridge between the slow part and fast part. And we have part A. Part A without any changes. Exactly the same. Exactly the same until almost the end. Then we have kind of coda. Suddenly we will hear some theme out of nothing. And we don't know what is this. Now, what it really is... Here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The scale made of four notes. the same motif is the coincidence or not I don't know don't ask me ask Chopin but it doesn't look like a coincidence and that it's very interestingly finished because we have this motif then again a little bit from the previous and again and then this motif is falling asleep 
Now only three. And the end. Charming. I think this piece is absolutely fantastic, incredible music. Um, it is not that often played and maybe because of Chopin wrote also ballads and scherzos and so many other fantastic music. But this is really a great piece of music and I'm sure you will agree. And it's worth to be played and to be listened to. And um, it brings a, a good mood. Maybe this is not uh, like typical Chopin. There's a little bit sadness in the middle. I think the proportions of the piece are anyway, even if we don't have these proportions in the middle part, as a whole it's great. The contrast between parts, fast part and slow part, are just fantastic. And um, the improvisation in the melody, you know, the last thing, this melody... It's just, uh, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down, just like improvisation, even the jazz music. Um, so that's, that's also why it is called impromptu, because of the way how the melody is um, being changed and how it is shaped. But uh, remember, not because the piece is free. Uh, if the piece is free, then it should be a fantasy right then we have a free piece but impromptu is something else uh, the melody is in being improvised thank you for watching and let me play for you this um, one more time at the end
Thank you very much and see you again. Bye bye.